Hi everybody, I'm Tim Brzezinski. In this screencast, I'm gonna show you how you can create a GeoGebra resource rather quickly, all right, to help students discover a very popular concept in both Algebra One and Geometry. But not only that, we're gonna learn how, to, how we can actually uh, reduce the amount of tools that you see in the GeoGebra toolbar. A lot of teachers and students with whom I work, you know, they kind of tend to get intimidated by the 8 million tools that pop down when they see, oh my goodness, you know. But, you know, sometimes you just want to give students, there are times you want to give students only the tools they need, perhaps, to complete a construction and discover a concept. We're going to create such a resource here, all right, and uh, we'll do so. And uh, to, make, uh, to make it even better, um, we're going to create online using GeoGebra's online app, okay? A lot of people that create GeoGebra resources tend to work in the version 5 software platform, right? But instead, uh, we're, what we're going to do is we're going to work in the app online because not every teacher in every school, the, the schools that are one-to-one, -one, has an actual computer with which they can download GeoGebra software on. Many teachers with whom I work have only Chromebooks. And so I'm going to actually, we're actually going to work online to create a resource with limited toolbar for the purpose of differentiating our instruction and differentiating consequent, uh, consequently each student's level of active engagement in discovering mathematics, uh, this particular concept here. So I'm gonna share my screen and we'll get started, all right? So to do so, if you, uh, again, if you're following along here, uh, you know, you're welcome to. I would actually uh, ask you to like maybe keep me keep this in one half and open up a wind, separate window in the other half of your screen if you could do so or whatever do it after. But I'm on my I'm on GeoGebra here uh, online logged into my account. You have to be logged in, of course. Go to your profile page right here, and what we want to do is go to where it says New Activity right here. We're going to author an activity here, okay. And so I will call this activity uh, warm up. And since today's date is 2-5, I'll just date 2-5-19. I think it's 2-5. Yeah. All right. So now we need to insert an element. We need to insert a GeoGebra element here. So I'll insert it. And now I could either search for someone else's applets or my own, or maybe I can upload one if I have a computer that I created with version 5. But here, we're going to create a GeoGebra applet online. So I hit create applet. Now these are the perspective, the classic app is gonna come up, but we could choose one of these perspective. I'm just gonna choose graphing calculator, okay? Graphing, and there's the template with which I can work. Now that looks kind of small, all right? So what I'm gonna do is go to the lower right corner and just kind of drag here a little bit. You can make it wider and you can drag down, see like that, and you make it there. Click in the graph and you have kind of a, a window with which you can view. So then you're thinking, okay, Tim, what's the discovery lesson here? You know. I know there's 8 million tools here, but how are you going to clean it up? That's a great question. Here's what I want to have students discover, like when they come in from lunch, say, in, a, in 10 or 15 minutes, right? Uh, I want my students to construct a line, like so, right? And I want them to construct a line that's parallel to that given line, All right? So parallel line, just touch the line and anywhere else, boom. And I want my kids to either discover or rediscover right? Because sometimes they always forget this concept. I don't know why. You know, here's slope, right? I, so you measure the slope of both the lines. See what I mean? And then click back on the move arrow. So in this case, I want students to create two parallel lines, measure their slopes quickly, and then just really uh, either re-remember or discover for the first time that, hey, you know what? Parallel lines always have the same slope. That's what I want my kids to discover. But the thing is, is that especially for the, you know, students' anxiety levels or, you know, different things, students don't need these like 8,000 million tools that you have here. 8,000 million, yeah, I teach math. So uh, what I'm going to do here is we're, we're going to clean up this toolbar, okay? We don't even need this stuff on the left here because that's just clutter. It's going to distract, okay? So here's what we're going to do. If you want to limit the toolbar, go over here to the menu, go to where it says tools right here, and then you see it right here, customize toolbar. Click on that, and you get another menu that shows up here. And this is what this means. Everything that you see here is what the students will see in the toolbar in the resource that they open that you create. So what I often do, I don't know if you've ever seen that TLC show, Hoarders, when they clean out someone's house, right? The, you know, people that you know accumulate so much stuff. What they see underneath this tool is, eight, is like a ton more. I like to just clean out everything. See how a few more popped up? I like to take everything out of the house here, get rid of it, right? And create a clean slate here through which I can add tools back one at a time. All right. That's the way I often work when I do this. 
some teachers just like to just, you know, eliminate, you know, like 8,000 things one at a time. But I like to take in, I like to clean out everything. Right now, there's nothing in the toolbar. But what we need to do is put a few tools back. Which tools do we use? Well, the ones that we use to construct what we just did, right? So every student needs the move arrow. That's what allows you to select things. So I'll bring back the move arrow. Think of what we did next. Didn't we uh, create a line? We made a line, move line back. And then we had the kids make a line parallel to that line. So I'm gonna drag the parallel line tool right here. Did you know you could also order the tools like that? You can actually move these up and down like so. See what I mean? I like to, I like to keep it in the order that they use it in. But, uh, hang on. Like right there, for example, right? But choice is yours. So they make a line, made a par line parallel to that. And then what do they do? They, f they measure the slopes of the lines. Aha, right? And then that was it. But one other tool I love to give the kids is the trash can, right? And so they can delete. Look at that. And now I hit apply and check it out. My GeoGebra resource that my students will uh, be working with in a few minutes when they come in will have only these tools right here showing up. Now that is a lot less anxiety provoking for many students that just get overwhelmed with the 8,000 tools that they see, all right? Even teachers for that matter. So now um, we have to clean this up a little bit because we don't need clutter. Now, again, my goal is to have kids discover the concept. And again, each teacher needs to make his or her own decision with respect to what I'm about to say next quickly. But here, right, I like to actually simply go, uh, go to the menu here. We don't need to see all this stuff here, right? So if I go to the menu, go to view, See, that's the algebra view there. That shows you all your objects you have in there. Students don't need a list of that, at least for this quick discovery they're going to engage with soon. So I'll uncheck algebra. See how it disappears? Checking it shows it. Unchecking it makes it disappear. Right? Click the menu bar again. That goes away. Now, um, even here, right, I, I can actually take this and, um, you know, in the grid here, uh, I can actually uh, choose to, uh, for example, one thing I love about the GeoGebra Classic app is that it lets you, uh, if you go to the magnet here, if you click fix to grid, it'll force uh, A and B to have lattice point, like integer coordinates right here. You see what I mean? So therefore, see how A and B are kind of locked at lattice points there, and C will eventually be that way too, right? And so now look at this. So what I want to do now is I'm going to hit the trash can. I'm going to erase everything that I made. Right. And I'm going to see if and cause I'm going to see if I can reconstruct this with my toolbar that I already have. All right. So, again, I make the, I make a line. I make a parallel line. Right. And now I measure the slopes. One, two. Oh, my gosh. Those slopes are equal. Do they always stay equal? Yes, they do. See, kids can just kids can quickly construct and tell you, their teacher, what they should have remembered, say, in geometry from last year's algebra one class. Right. All through a quick discovery activity that you can author here. Now, I would even venture to say I want to get I'm going to actually choose to get rid of these uh, axes here because technically you don't need them. Right. But uh, but you have what you have there. So now I delete all this stuff. Now, some teachers like to show only the major grid lines like the minor grid lines. There's a way you can do that. So if I right click, go to graphics. Right. Go to grid. And I'll just do major grid lines here. And you know what I'll even do too? If I click on the x-axis tab, I'll, I'll actually lock the distance uh, at one unit. Because when you zoom out, it actually makes the square length bigger just to scale it. But see how my zoom out now? Every square side is, is one unit long. All right. Hit done. Once you format it just the way you want it, hit done. And there it is. But then you say, oh, wait, wait, Tim, Tim, hold on a second. Where's the toolbar, man? I don't see it. All right. Well, you got to put it back in. All right. So a standard applet window size great is 700 by 500. That's awesome for like small Chromebook screens or tablets and stuff. If you start making it huge, it takes forever to load on like smaller devices. This is a great size. I recommend no more than 900 by 600. All right. But here, if you go to advanced settings, uh, you want to show the toolbar. Right. And there's our limited toolbar right there. See. And now we could show the menu. We could show, ev again, everything that we had the option to do. I was able to right click. Kids should be able to as well. Drag labels around. I usually show every, they don't need the input bar. The style bar is cool if they want to change colors. This right here is a style bar. Like when you plot stuff, you can change colors or do stuff, whatever. But look at how clean that looks, right? Right there. You could choose the GeoGebra Classic app or you can make it the Graphing Calculator app. I'll show you right here. The Graphing Calculator is the app that is a newer looking app like this. See the tools? Limited. Right, I could actually make it give it this look right here if I want to. Maybe we could stretch it out just a little bit more. It's okay, right? And it'll work the very same way. I, I love the look of the new app. 
see, I create with the classic app, but I actually like to give the appearance of the newer app right here, right? The newer graphing calculator. So we hit done. And now you, the teacher, can author your own questions and say, okay, hey, you know what, create, you know, directions. You could type it up in a Google Doc, the four or five steps that the kids need to engage with to do to create the line, the parallel line, the slope, and do whatever, right? And then they make that quick discovery on their own. I leave that to you, the teacher, but I could add that. And now I hit save and close and check it out. My, at least my GeoGebra piece is ready, my GeoGebra uh, resource is ready to be used. I click on it like a student would, and this is what the kid sees. Now, I'm the student in your class. Let's put it to the test here. I make a line. I make a parallel line. Whoops, I shouldn't have done that. Hang on a second. Make a parallel line. Got to go off the line, silly, right? So I touch the line, go here, and then measure the slopes, and voila. Go select, move it around. The slopes are now equal. Quick student discovery. How long did it take us to author that? Maybe a few minutes, right? You can create these constructions in no time at all. And now I can share this in Google Classroom. You know, this, the possibilities here are absolutely endless, okay? So that's how you can create your own GeoGebra resource with uh, a customized toolbar. Uh, I, I do it all the time, and um, I, you know, it, I find that it really ultimately helps my, uh, helps my students greatly. And so basically, um, you know, the sky's the limit to what you can do here. For, here's another example from geometry, right? A constructions. I have three points in a city and I want to find the one point equidistant from them, right? For an honors geometry class, I may decide to eliminate all the tools except for the point tool, the compass tool, and the line tool, where I want my students to physically, you know, actively engage in completing a construction, you know, compass and straight edge, and a digital version of that same, you know, yes, they should do paper as well a digital version of that activity. But for kids that struggle more, I might provide them a middle of the road. I might provide them the midpoint tool and the perpendicular line tool. You know, those two make perpendicular bisector because we need to put the perpendicular bisectors up to get the circumcenter of the triangle, right? The point equidistant from those three. But the other option is simply uh, for my most struggling of struggling students, I'll give them some tools, but I'll just leave the perpendicular bisector tool right there which is the easiest to use. I mean, some students cannot physically complete the compass and straight edge construction, that deep critical level, high level thinking, why it's valid. But my students who struggle more, I'll give them the, the tools that they need that'll help conceptually make their lives easier, but still make them reason, you know, uh, that, wow, you know, why, why the perpendicular bisector? They could focus more on why they're using a perpendicular bisector tool, right? Versus the actual, you know, shenanigans of the, you know, constructing it via compass and straight edge. That's how modifying GeoGebra's toolbar effectively allows you as the teacher to differentiate each student's level of active engagement within discovering concepts in your curriculum. In this particular case, you just saw how kids could quickly discover or rediscover that parallel lines have the same slope. Kids build it in three minutes and they tell you, all right? Now, what can I do next? For the perpendicular investigation, well, guess what? I can go back to that activity and edit it and add the perpendicular line tool in there. Right. You know, you don't you again, it's all about working smart, not working hard. You could just quickly take a few minutes and tweak what you need to tweak. And there you go. All right. GeoGebra is a natural, uh, uh, natural uh, differentiator of uh, teachers can differentiate effectively using uh, that technique of modifying the toolbar, giving kids, you know, tools that they need or, you know, a variety of tools, but maybe not everything. So I'm Tim Brzezinski. Thanks for watching. Uh, have some more stuff coming up later this week, maybe early next. If you like what you see, feel free to subscribe. A lot more how-tos in GeoGebra uh, coming up. So have a great day.